Chapter 16 Monday morning, I went in early so that I was already in the office when Mr. Willoughby arrived. Sir, I need to talk to you when you a have minute. I said when he came in. Now is as good a time as any, I guess, before I get started on anything. Come on in and we'll talk. He invited on his way through my office. He took a seat in the chair behind his desk and motioned for me to take the one in front. What's going on? He looked at me, expectant. I'm sorry to have to do this, sir, but I need to resign. I'm sorry to hear that. Can I ask why? He looked surprised and I understood why, it was rather sudden, and he had no idea what was going on in my life. It's not any one thing. It's a lot of them added together, I took a breath. I'm trying to plan a wedding, find a house and move. I stopped for a second at a loss for what to say. I just need more time. We can arrange a leave of absence, you don't have to quit. He offered. I knew he was trying to keep me from going. I appreciate that, sir, but it's not gonna work. I'm not going to need just a little time. It's going to be some now, increasingly more later. I'd hate to leave you without the help you need because I can't work the hours. Are you sure? He seemed reluctant to let me go. I'm sure, sir. This is best for us both. I pulled out the envelope I'd put in my purse the night before. Here's my official letter, it says I'm giving two weeks' notice. If we can get one of the other secretaries in here, I'll train her before I leave. He took the envelope and laid it on the desk. I'll see if we can get someone in. I hate to see you go, Nikki. If there's something I can do to convince you to stay, please let me know. If there were, I'd tell you but I just can't see a way to make it work. I've really enjoyed the time I've been here and while I hate to leave, I believe it's time. All right. He accepted my decision. I left him to start his day and returned to my desk to start getting things ready for my replacement. Wednesday afternoon, with Mr. Weatherby's approval, I took a long lunch and went to my parents' farm to surprise Devin with a picnic. I'd packed a tablecloth and picked up some takeout. Carrying the large bag I'd put it all in. I headed out past the barn to where Dad said I could find him. When I turned the corner, I stopped short. The last thing I'd expected to find was my brother fighting with my fiancé. Not just arguing, actually physically fighting. I stood for a moment, silent, as I watched the two of them. I could tell from his sharp motions and the fierce look on his face that Cameron was driven by anger, but Devon's movements were careful and deliberate. He blocked my brother's blows without making any move to retaliate or land any blows of his own. I knew the moment Devon realized I was there. He went from letting Cameron vent his emotions to trying to stop it without getting either of them hurt. Cam, Devon spoke for the first time since I'd come around the building. Cameron, stop. No, you took advantage of my sister. And she's watching you now. Cameron's head shot up and he looked around him until he spotted me. I gave him a finger wave and small smile. He dropped his head. Shit. I heard him say under his breath. Are you having fun? I approached them slowly. Cameron turned pink. We were just... Oh, I know what you were doing. I made my way closer. You were just accusing the man I love of taking advantage of me. Of getting me pregnant, so what? He can leave me at the altar? Do you really think that Devin is the kind of guy who would do that to anyone? Much less to me. I watched the color rise in my brother's face. I thought you knew me better than that. I let my derisive tone tell him how disgusted I was by his behavior. But? No. I interrupted him again. No excuses. Use your head and not the little one either. I couldn't believe that Cameron would do this, but at the same time, it warmed something inside of me for my brother to stand up for me like this. It took two of us for this to happen, not just one. 
We didn't know about the baby when he proposed, and I accepted. I'm not a child, and I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't act like I'm too stupid to make important decisions in my own life. I kept my voice low, not yelling or screaming, and Cameron knew that was a sign he was in deep shit. I know you're not a child. He tried to pacify me. Then why are you acting like I am? Devin stayed off to the side, watching, as if he was afraid he'd have to step between us. He might. If Cameron persisted in this stupidity, I might lose my temper enough to slap him, and that would be bad. Though, I wasn't sure that was what Devin was afraid of. I just thought. I interrupted him yet again. No, that's the problem. You weren't thinking. Because I know if you had actually thought about it, you would have realized that I'm not the kind of person who would put up with something like that. He gave me a superior look, as if he knew better. Jack Hemmings. He made the name a challenge. A year ago, I'd been in what I thought was a serious relationship with Jack, and then I'd found him in bed with his ex-wife. Is an ass. I would have understood if he'd told me he wanted to go back to his ex-wife. Finding them in bed together didn't make it any easier. What does Jack have to do with Devin? Do you think because I had the poor taste to date Jack, then Devin must be just as bad? He had the grace to flush again. No, it's just that this is all so fast. His career ended and he comes back to town, then you're dating. Next thing we know you're engaged, with a quick wedding, and in between the engagement and the speedy wedding, you announce that you're pregnant. I'm just afraid you're rushing into something you'll regret later. I took a deep breath and tried to rein in my temper. I should have known to expect this. Not being able to explain to my brother about mating, I had to try another angle. I appreciate that you're concerned and that you're trying to look out for me, but there's more to it than you know, things I can't tell you. Trust me when I say I know what I'm doing, and even though it's fast, I'm certain this is the right thing for me. Devin is the one, the only one for me. I have no doubts and neither should you. The will to fight seemed to drain out of Cameron. I hope you're right. He sighed. I guess I've made enough of a fool of myself for one day. He looked at me a moment, as if trying to figure something out. His eyes flickered down to the bag in my hand, the name of the restaurant where I'd gotten it printed on the side. I'll leave you two to enjoy the lunch Nikki's brought you. He turned and left, heading back toward the front of the barn where all the vehicles were. I watched him go, waiting until he disappeared around the corner of the barn, before turning back to Devon. You get much of that? I tried to lift the mood. He shrugged. It's a first for me. What are you up to anyway? I thought we could have a picnic. I lifted the bag I was still carrying. I'd much rather eat with you than fight with Cam. He pulled me against him and gave me a light kiss before taking my hand and leading me to a spot in the shade where he helped me lay out the tablecloth. We shared our meal, talking about the houses we'd looked at the night before and what we planned to do that evening. After we finished, I packed everything up, kissed him goodbye, and went back to work. By Friday, we'd looked at several more houses, and I was starting to believe we'd never find a place that fit our budget where we could both stand to live. We'd looked at more houses than I cared to count. They all had two bedrooms, and we could have taken any one, but there was always something wrong. One had a chemical smell that gave us both a headache in the short time we were there. Another was on a lot so small we could hear the neighbors from inside the house with all the doors and windows closed. A third sat beside a small restaurant. Normally it wouldn't have been bad, but the day we looked at the house my nausea was particularly strong and the scent of the foods coming from next door made me physically ill. We were finally able to arrange to see the houses that Bill had mentioned. They were both a little bit out of town, but not far. They were both on large lots, so the neighbors weren't too close. The first house had a field on one side and a house about a hundred yards away on the other. The only noticeable odors were the smell of turned soil in the field to neighboring the lot, the familiar scents coming from another neighbor's horses. 
I didn't mind the horses, I'd grown up on a farm and the freshly turned soil smell was comforting. I knew it would change through the year, but that was okay too. The second house had houses on either side, but they were both a couple hundred feet away. It was far enough that standing outside the house, I could hear the kids playing outside, but nothing from inside the neighbors' houses. Though I didn't fall in love with either of them, at least the ones he'd sent us out to were something I could live with. I just had to choose between them. I spent a day and night thinking about it, knowing we were getting short on time before picking one. I chose the first. I liked that the neighbors were farther away and the smell of the field that sat to one side. Saturday we made the deposits and picked up the keys. We were ready to start moving and with no time to spare, we had to turn back clean apartments in less than two weeks.